Hi, good afternoon, everyone. So, yeah, it's very so cool, yeah, with the cameras and stuff. So, I uh, hope you guys uh, still will be able to absorb whatever we're going to do today. So, as you all are aware, it's going to be two sessions. So, the first session will be from Shots 1 and then one thirty to 2.30. I hope you guys can bear with me throughout the whole, this whole two sessions, lah. right? So, um, before we move on, this is going to be like a very short recap of total four topics which you have learned throughout your grade 9, grade 10. So for day one, it's going to be some agenda where it will be like a recap of only four chapters. Recap doesn't mean that we just go through the notes all over. We will also have some questions, sample of questions, where we're going to see how to tackle that question in particular paper. So the main motive or focus on this will be on paper four, right? And <clears throat> before we move on, you guys have to familiarize yourself with uh, some format of our IG paper. So I'm not sure how many of you are fully aware or we just, after our trials by right, we supposed to know, right? So we supposed to know what are the papers and what are the terms and conditions and what are the marks allocations and so on. Um, maybe my, some might have forgotten. So let me just go through, refresh our memory a bit. So we have three sets of paper, paper three, paper four, and paper six. Paper two will be multiple choice, 45 minutes, 40 marks with 40 MCQ questions. And uh, clearly one question, one mark. And your time allocation should be very, very, uh, like very end to end. So you cannot just like spend two minutes, three minutes or five minutes for one question, because as you can see 45 minutes, 40 questions. So you just have to allocate your timing very clearly and then don't miss any questions. Like missing questions, you might lose marks. And at least try to choose any of the answer if you are really, really, really unsure of the answer, uh, question and answer. So you have to choose one. Don't, don't leave anything blank. So that will totally like, uh, it might give you some negative effect on that one thing. Paper four is theoretical. Paper four and paper six, more to writing. Paper four will be very, very short answers. We have short answers and also long answers. Long answers don't mean, doesn't mean that it will be an essay type of questions or what. So it will be short answers. One hour, 15 minutes, 80 marks. And the questions, we cannot just set that six questions, seven questions, because we might have five questions, but we might have 10 sub questions for that one particular main question. So we cannot, um, fix that only these many questions will be in this paper. So for time allocation, you should be able to go through the paper fully from top to bottom. Then only you should know how to allocate your marks. And to answer this paper for, by right, you're supposed to tackle all your very, very short answer. Short answer in the sense of all your one mark answer. One mark answer. So your one mark answer must be tackled first so that your long answers will be a sub-question of that and sub-answer of that. So once you're able to, if let's say we have like 4A, 4B, 4C. A, you're supposed to get the correct answer by hook or by crook. We have to. Because the following answers will be the uh, continuation or very much related for your previous answer. So that's why always the first answer, first, second answer, very important for you to tackle first. One thing. Another one, short answer and structured question. Structured question in the sense of maximum mark allocation. If let's say there are diagrams, there are short answer, I mean, there are short answer questions with diagram, that will be structured question. And uh, your mark allocation will be together with your explanation and your diagram. So doesn't mean that I got my explanation correct already. So my diagram can so so up. No. There's no such way. So your explanation and diagram plays similar role in your particular question. And moving on to paper six. Paper six, as we all know, it's alternative to practical. Alternative to practical in the sense of 
uh, we don't have lab, lab hands-on and all. So it's lab, lab hands-on and all, it's practical. Alternative to practical is mostly theoretical. So whatever we're going to learn in the lab by doing, uh, by practically attempting to it, we're going to study it in a, in a theoretical way and we're going to apply it in writing. So what we what we might observe, observe what we might get, what, what are the uh, readings we might have, so all these will be theoretical. So we'll be fully learning and also memorizing, not only memorizing, understanding. So mostly for paper six, we will have all these um, color changes, all the visibility changes, and also measurement changes, calculation, all these will be involved in this paper six. And then it's going to be one hour with 40 marks and all these experimental skills. It's experimental skills in the sense of, I'm sure when we were doing our trial paper, we noticed that there will be diagrams where they give us some kind of measurement with cylinder, cylinder reading and all that. And then we have to find the particular reading with precise calculation, I mean, precise uh, volume or precise um, numbering that, that particular numbering will be applied in your answer. So here, your observation skill and your precisions will be calculated. Understand so far? So moving on. <clears throat> if let's say a graph, let's say they're giving you a graph with a, a piece of graph, have a place to plot your graph. Right, a graph paper, a similar similar with graph paper, but will be will be fitted in your exam paper itself. And then your answer might be plot a graph here in that given space. So you have to plot your graph together with the x-axis, y-axis, and don't forget the labeling. And the labeling is important. And some question they might say, answer this question in the space provided, and in the same axis, in the same axis in the sense of same graph, same graph which you use for question A, you're going to use for question B. And for another space, so you have to use in that space so that you can use the same axis to draw the line. Another question, graph. So that's what they meant by in the same axis. So, and then look for hidden words. Hidden words in the sense of which of the following is a gas containing diatomic molecule? So many students, we might overlook either the gas, either the diatomic. But most, both these words are very important in order to answer this, this kind of particular question. They might have two keywords in one question where you have to identify both. Maybe gas, mostly gas will be found in which period, sorry, which group? It will be in group 18, usually noble gases. So if let's say they are asking for diatomic, can we find it? If let's say they are, they are asking for only diatomic, clearly we can answer any of the atom from halogen, group 17. But then they're asking for gas, so I have to tackle it. So nitrogen is diatomic, it's a gas. Okay, that's how we're gonna answer that particular question. And then weak statements. Weak statements in, in the sense of, okay, if let's say they are asking, uh, here they have given the example of graphite. Graphite used as electrodes in electrolysis. If let's say they are asking, uh, what is graphite? It's just electrode. So you cannot say the electrode in what? Electrode used where? Where do we use electrode? When do we need electrode? So that is important. So electrode used in electrolysis. So that answer is supposed to be full. And show the hydrogen atom either as a circle. Okay, this question, this final tips is for your drawing. Drawing like your ionic bonding, your covalent bonding, and also your electronic structure diagram. So all this electronic uh, or electron-based question, your particular, what they call, particular diagram in the middle must have uh, the atoms symbol. So it's always advisable to write the atoms symbol and as well as proton and neutron number in the middle so that it's more precise. Understand? So before I move on for today's agenda, it's going to be today's agenda going to be particulate of matter, chemical bonding, electricity and chemistry, organic chemistry. I'm sure like you guys like 
what's so special in this? There is so what kind of what kind of very tedious things that we might miss? So you're gonna be here. And during the lesson, if you have any questions, hold it on. So until the end of the lesson, we might discuss it together in the end. Or if not, we might save it for next class as well, next session. So it's gonna be either way, either way, right?